So good morning and a very warm welcome to worship from St. Mark's, wherever it is that you're joining us from this morning. The Lord be with you. wonder uh, this morning, does anybody uh, write notes on their hands? Maybe, maybe at school, and you don't want to tell uh, too many people this, but maybe at school you wrote the answers to, uh, to tests on your hands, maybe your spelling test or your maths equations or whatever it was. That's very, very naughty. Or maybe uh, you write stuff in your hands whenever you have something really important to remember. You think, okay, well, I'll not forget it if I write it on my hand. Or maybe some of you doodle on your hands. Maybe uh, you draw uh, different things. So maybe uh, you draw, look, there's a wee eye and a wee eye and a wee happy face there. So, hello. Yeah, maybe you doodle on your hands and and uh, that's that's good better than cheating in exams wonder though if you've ever written something in your hands and you just couldn't get it uh, off maybe you've written in permanent marker on your hands and uh, just to maybe to show how serious you are with your girlfriend or your boyfriend you've written on, in permanent marker on your hands how much you love them so maybe i would write P heart G for E the E ever E V E R. Okay, so there you go. That's how much I love Gemma forever. Okay, in permanent marker. So wow. In the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, God tells the people of Israel, his special, his chosen people, that he has written their names on the palm of his hand. But he hasn't used a normal pen to write their names on his hand, or he hasn't used a permanent marker. He's engraved into his hand their names. I guess that word engraved, if you think of carving uh, your name into a tree, that's, that's kind of what it is to engrave something, to sort of cut it in to your hands, into the palm of God's hands. In our in-church worship today, we'll be having a dedication for Georgia. And this is an opportunity to give thanks to God for Georgia and to ask God to bless her and to be present and known in her life. And as we dedicate Georgia to the Lord, she becomes a very special person to God. And God, just as he did with the Israelites, will write and engrave Georgia's name into the palm of his hands. That tells us two things at least. First of all, it tells us that God is really serious about those who love him and who follow him. He loves them so much that he puts their names into his hands. Second, it tells us that uh, a bit like I'm not going to forget today that I, I love Gemma forever. Um, it tells us that God will not forget us because we'll always be in front of him and on the palm of his hand. Uh, a little later on in our online service today, we're going to hear from Emily. And she's going to tell us something of her faith journey and about how God did not forget her. Even at times when she maybe was far from him. He knew her by name and he loved her. And here is where it gets personal for each one of us. God knows you by name. He loves you so much that he engraved your name on the palm of his hands. But even more than that, he loves you so much that the palms of his hands had a nail driven through each of them as he hung on the cross to die for you. So as you come to worship this morning, know this, you are special to God. God loves you. 
and he longs to have you not simply as a name on his hand but as his child whom he loves and cares for and walks through life with on a daily basis is today the day that you surrender and respond to that love of God found in Jesus we sing together my Jesus my Savior taken from Luke chapter 1 beginning to read at verse 39. At that time Mary got ready and hurried to town uh, to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. By, but why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfil his promise to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we light our 
fourth Advent candle. We remember Mary. We remember how she was used by God in a very special way. <sighs> Let's pray. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. We now sing uh, a song, It Was On A Starry Night. On a starry night, when the hills were bright, earth lay sleeping, sleeping calm and still. Then a cottage, in a manger bed, a boy. So as I mentioned earlier in our sermon slot this morning, we're going to hear from the third of our three church members who are sharing something of their faith during Advent. And so as Emily comes to share about her faith journey and about what God has done and is doing in her life, let's invite God to speak to us through her words of testimony. Let us pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank you that you have written uh, engraved indeed our names into the palm of your hand that you love us so much as emily shares something of how you have been at work in her life lord we we ask that you would come into our lives that you would speak to us afresh today that we would hear your call and that we would have the boldness to respond to it we pray this through jesus christ our lord amen Good morning. My name is Emily and it's lovely to have a chance to speak with you this morning. And I want to say that I was born into the Roman Catholic faith and God was part of my everyday life, in school, in church and at home. I loved the Bible stories and going to church. 
I made my first communion and confirmation, and I remember my first communion as a joyful occasion. The church was flooded with summer light, and there was a smell of incense and a sense of occasion. I still love the smell of incense. My only confirmation memory is of a dark, wet night as I entered the church. I recently found out that it was early February in 1959 and I had just turned eight. That explained the memory of a dark, wet night. Looking back on my journey has reminded me of God occasions. I remember at primary school smoking a cigarette and feeling very guilty. I told God that I was sorry and that I would not smoke until I was grown up. His gift to me was that I never had the urge to smoke, even though it was very fashionable. I was still in very involved in church life when I met my husband in 1970, and we married in 1973. Jimmy stood by me. He understood me and my lack of confidence and encouraged me to achieve in terms of my self-esteem. Things were not easy for a mixed marriage at that time. My husband's family had been part of St. Mark's for many years. In fact, his great-grandmother was married in this church. Over the next few years, particularly when the children arrived, I started to drift away from regular church attendance, partly because Jimmy was working shifts, he was in the police, and it was difficult to get a babysitter. Those of you who lived through those dark days will appreciate how difficult things were. Over the next 20 odd years, I became a token Christian, attending church occasionally, either here in St. Mark's or with friends of other denominations. One of my friends at that time was a Bible-believing Christian who lived her faith, and I admired her trust in God. Had you asked me before I started writing this journal, what was the worst time in my life? I would have said without hesitation, the 1990s. In 1990, my lovely, funny, wise and generous mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. She had to go into a nursing home that summer, but the Alzheimer's seemed to worsen every few months. By the 13th of December, the home could not cope with her condition, and she was transferred to an Alzheimer's home. At Christmas, I had niggles about the suitability of the home, and I felt an awful sense of guilt about her being there. I knew that we needed to get Christmas out of the way and take a look at things in the new year. On the 31st of December, we received a call to say that she was very ill and we needed to come as soon as possible. We stayed with her until her death on the 4th of January 1991. My husband and I were sitting with her when she died. God allowed me to be with her at her passing to see that she had a peaceful death. As many of you who have experienced Alzheimer's, it's a cruel disease and causes two bereavements, the loss of your loved one's personality and finally their body. At her funeral, we got out of the car. It was blowing a gale and raining. And as we approached the church, a dove flew across the door, which is surprising on such a bad day. I felt it was a sign from God that my mother was restored and was at peace. I came to realise that God was good to my mother by taking her so soon as she would have hated her condition. The 1990s were not good, but looking back, that was when I grew spiritually. I made a good friend at work and occasionally she would invite me to her women's group at Cumber Baptist Church. I think by this stage, God was calling me back. Every time I was invited to hear a particular speaker, there was always a message for me. I did not go to the meetings, God brought me there. At one of the meetings, the guest speaker was Hilary McDowell. 
And as I watched this small lady with so many health issues and mobility problems struggle to get up to the mic. But that when she started speaking, it was amazing. And that was the first time I felt the presence of God in the room. My work colleague and good Christian friend bought me my first Bible. And my other friend of long standing bought me my study Bible. I was introduced to daily readings, for example, Word for Today. My two friends were completely different personalities from different Christian denominations, but they were both united in their love of Jesus and trying to live their best life for him. Still in the 1990s, I was praying more, but I had still failed to make a commitment to God. I prayed through difficult situations and with one person in particular there'd been a falling out and I tried approaching them to reconcile without success. One day I was praying and asking God, am I doing the right thing? Should I be doing more? That was the first time I heard the voice in my ear saying, look at your flowers. I need to explain. I could not grow flowers in my garden because the deer came in and ate them. So we built a wall at the front of the house to give me room to grow shrubs and tubs. I was looking constantly to see for any sign of a flower on any of the shrubs and I could have sworn that I looked the day before. But lo and behold, there were two beautiful blooms on the shrub. I got my answer and eventually I was reconciled with the person. On another occasion, my husband and son were having a difficult time communicating and one Sunday afternoon I was really concerned because they had been so close. I lay down on the bed and was praying for them when the voice came again and said, it will be okay. I looked out the window to see a beautiful rainbow over the quarry. The phone rang and I knew it was my son. I did not tell anyone for years about the voice in my ear. Since then, I have learned that God speaks to us in many ways. A Bible verse that jumps out at you, your daily reading, or a message in a sermon. I love Christian television, and one of my favourite speakers is Joyce Meyer. So many times, God has spoken directly to me through Joyce. It was at this stage in my journey of faith that I realised God is alive and knows me. I still had not learnt that prayer is talking to God. I was still inclined to pray by reciting the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and any other prayer I could think of. I felt something was missing. I have since learned, I have since learned to talk to God about everything, praise Him and thank Him and it's wonderful. I have heard that God gets our attention in many different ways. Some people just need a tap on the shoulder, while others need something bigger or more dramatic. Mine was a dental abscess. I needed to go to the city hospital for an antibiotic drip because the swelling was not responding. I overheard one doctor saying to another to keep an eye on me over the weekend because it would be very serious if the swelling burst. I had never had anything serious wrong with me before and this was a bit of a shock. I decided that I needed to make a commitment to God and join a church. And I came to St Mark's one Sunday morning. Canon Smith spoke from the pulpit and said, if you are here this morning, it is because you are meant to be here. I was amazed. This was to be my church family. I have been very happy here and I have met some truly wonderful people. Firstly, I joined Mother's Union and got to know quite a few people. I completed the Alpha course and I was looking for a follow-up. I had wanted to join a Bible study group and the opportunity arose when the Rector and Reverend Peter started the Bible study class. 
I thank them so much for giving me this opportunity to learn about God. Firstly, we learnt about the books of the Bible, then the discipleship course, followed by Christianity Explored, and the latest was the prayer course. I would recommend any of these courses. Each, after each one, I had a hunger to learn more. One of the wow moments was when I learned for the first time that no one is righteous because of what they do, that you can only be made righteous through faith in Christ Jesus. When we learned about the gifts of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit, I wanted the Holy Spirit to come to me to equip me for whatever God had in store for me. As I mentioned earlier, I was confirmed when I was eight, but I didn't fully understand what a wonderful gift from God, and I wanted as an adult to be confirmed. I approached the rector and Reverend Peter, and at first it was felt that it would not be possible, but the rector checked it out and thankfully. I was allowed to be confirmed in the Church of Ireland. It was an amazing step on my journey of faith, a truly wonderful evening. I feel that it does not matter what age we are. If we are still living, God has still work for us to do. I know that you will recognise God at work and I hope that you will recognise God at work in your life. He loves you and he knows you by name. Thank you for listening to me. So we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so as we respond to God's word to us today, as we hear the story of Emily, of God at work in her life, and as we hear of how very special we are to God, how our na names are engraved on his nail-pierced hands, we make our response to God by turning to Christ, by confessing our sins, so that we may experience God's love and forgiveness washing over us and setting us free. We pray together. O oh God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish. We have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time to amend your lives, and the grace and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you chose Mary to be a special part of your story to redeem the world from sin. We praise you that you still call men and women, young and old, into your story today. We pray for the church in all the world and in this parish. May we and all your people obey your call to serve you and trust you with our lives' stories, past, present and future. Give us grace to follow the example of Mary in her humble acceptance of your will, in her trust that you fulfill all your promises, in her joy at your saving power, and help us to accept the challenge to serve you whether the task is great or small. May our lives bring glory to Christ, our Saviour and King. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, your Son, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, was born to a young girl from an unknown town. So you humble the mighty by your perfect humility. We pray for all who hold high positions, for our Queen, the Prime Minister and Government, the Northern Ireland Executive, Grant them wisdom, humility, and honesty in their service of the people, that peace, justice, and fellowship may abound among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your only Son would be raised and cared for in an ordinary home and family. We pray that you would be with us in our daily lives, in our relationships, and that you would transform our everyday experiences by your presence. Thank you for the many ways in which those you have given us help us to see that you really are with us and part of our stories. Bless our families at Christmas, those we will see and be with, and those from whom we are parted by distance or disagreement. And as we are aware of those around us who will be alone at this time, help us to serve them through prayer and acts of kindness, with understanding and in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, Mary praised you because you fill the hungry with good things. We pray for all who lack food or water, 
shelter or work. For the people of Afghanistan facing extreme hunger and praying for a good response to the appeal for food and nutrition. For the nations of East Africa where food is scarce because of drought and flood. We pray for all who are ill or in pain and we name them before you now. We thank you for those who serve everyone in the community at this time of increasing COVID infection, cold weather and darkness. Keep them safe in their work and strengthen them to do all that is asked of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our Advent journey, God of hope, God of peace, God of love, you are our joy. Hear these prayers which we offer in faith and love and in the name of Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son. Grant that, as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen gathering our prayers and praises into one, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today in our worship. As Emily has shared with, uh, with us of her story of faith, we pray that you would know God's presence and his faithfulness just as Emily has known it through many years and that you would find God, God's presence and his love in the way that Emily has found that and the peace that comes with that. So let me pray as we finish. May the God of hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the Holy Spirit you may abound with hope and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs>